we're going to start off uh, with uh, Ralihe. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about uh, sample groups of other planar graphs. So, okay, so the first question might be, what is the sample group, right? Um, okay, the sample group has been defined in many different scenarios. Like, is the first dynamical discrete model with self-organized criticality? And it's been studied from geophysics, economy, to neuroscience. And in mathematics, we studied it from many different point of views. In particular, we explored it from the algebraic graph theory point of view. And well, the sample group has different names, like the group of components, the, for example, the next talk in this room will be talking about the Jacobian group. So that is the same group. Um, the, it's defined by the chip firing game as the Picard group, many names. So it is an important object. I hope you believe me. <laughs> and okay, so I'm interested on the algebraic structure of the sample group. So I'm going to describe it on a algebraic way, algebraic way. So the first thing is, okay, you have a graph and you consider it's Laplacian, right? So the Laplacian graph, the Laplacian matrix of a graph was defined yesterday by Steve, maybe all, all of you or the majority of you saw that talk and, and Steve defined it very well. So if it's just to remind you, the diagonal of the matrix is going to be uh, the, defined by the vector of degrees of the, of the graph. So for example, here we have uh, the graph with this labeling, B1, B2 to, to B5. And we can see that the Laplacian matrix is uh, exactly this, where you have the diagonal, the degrees, as, as you say, and outside of the di diagonal, we have minus the adjacency matrix. So if B1 is adjacent to B2, or in this case, B1 is adjacent to B3, we have a minus one and so on. I think, okay, I think I have this a little bit mess messed up, but you have the idea. Okay, so if you have the, the graph and then it's Laplacian matrix, then you can define the sample group in this algebraic way. The sample group denoted by K of G is the torsion part of the co-kernel of the Laplacian matrix. And the co-kernel of the Laplacian matrix is the module of n copies of, of the integer numbers uh, module the image of the transpose of the Laplacian. So the Laplacian can be defined in a directed graph with multiple edges. So, uh, but in this case, uh, for this talk, then me think about simple graphs and moreover, let me think about connected simple graphs. So in this case, we can just forget about the transpose because the Laplacian matrix is symmetric. So can I simplify this a little bit more? The answer is yes. For example, we can think about the reduced Laplacian. That is the Laplacian where you take out a row and a, and a column corresponding to, to, to a vertex. And then you have the, the sample group is isomorphic to the co-kernel of the reduced Laplacian. And that is true for any row or, or column that you are taking, that you are taking out. So we can see the sample group as, the, as this co-kernel, which is the module of n minus one copies of C uh, over the image of the reduced Laplacian. Okay, so this is a, completely algebraic way to, to see the sample group of a graph. 
but it has um, a lot of combinatorial structure. So a first approach to try to compute the sample group of a graph uh, is the mid normal form. Actually, yesterday, if I remember correctly, Professor Victor Reiner asked Steve in his talk if someone has studied the uh, mid normal form of, of the distance Laplacian. So uh, I don't know, people are just interested on the mid normal form of matrices because they helped you to calculate co-kernels and, and for example, they helped you to calculate the, the compute the sample group of a graph. So, okay, if we have a matrix, an M per N integer matrix, then there exists uh, two invertible matrices and a diagonal matrix D such that M and D are equivalent. So we have the, the co-kernel of two equivalent um, uh, matrices are isomorphic. Furthermore, to call this as mid normal form, form we have that the diagonal matrix is, uh, has this form where D1 divides D2 and D2 divides D3 and so on. So in this case, we have that the co-kernel of M is this direct sum of, of groups. So this is a nice structure. Therefore, we have the first important property of the sample group of a, of a graph, which is uh, this, this identity, this equivalence. Okay, so if we know the the D1 and Dn minus one, which are called the invariant factors of L. So these are the diagonal entries on the mean normal form of the Laplacian. Then the sample group is isomorphic to this. And we, ha we have many, others proper many other properties uh, of the uh, sample group, for example, Kirchhoff matrix tree theorem that Steve mentioned yesterday as well. Uh, the order of, of the sample group is equal to the number of spanning trees, which is the determinant of the reduced Laplacian. And this is a useful and, and, and nice looking result from 2017, that the probability of the sample group of a random gram being cyclic is at most this number, where this, these things are the uh, Riemann set of functions. So uh, this is cool. And this, um, this proves a almost two decades old um, conjecture that almost ev people used to think that almost every sample group was uh, going to be cyclic but that's not true. And this last result says that if G is a graph and these are its blocks, it's non trivial blocks, then you can separate uh, the sample group in this direct sum. So we can, in, in, our, in our problem, so we're trying to compute the sample group of a outer planar graph, then we can think of biconnected other planar graphs. And so we direct our, our attention to that. And in particular, uh, some properties of the sample group of, the, of a plane graph or planar graph. So okay, you have G, a planar graph, and then you draw it on the plane. So you have this plane drawing of the graph then you take its dual, which is this nice picture that I have here. So the graph in blue is an outer planar graph, for example. And then the dual is the graph that you obtain by drawing a vertex for each, uh, for each face, including the outer face, which here I denote by FK. 
and then you you put an edge, you draw the, an edge for every uh, edge that uh, every face shares, right? So the dual graph can be a multigraph. And for planar graphs, you actually have plane, gra plane graphs, you actually have this equality. So the sample group is actually the sample group of its dual. So we can see it as the co kernel of the reduced Laplace and of its dual. So if we are going to do, if we are going to be thinking about the reduced Laplace of the dual, we might as well be thinking about uh, reducing it by erasing the row and column of the outer face. So we are going to be thinking about that and see what's, what's gonna happen. So, okay, if G is a graph and it's a bi-connected other plane graph, which are the graphs we are interested in, then, it, well, if that happens, if and only if it's weak dual, is a tree. So as we can see in this picture, for example, that is the case. Right? We have this tree, the weak dual is just the dual graph, uh, and then you erase the other the vertex corresponding to the outer face and all its edges. So okay, we know, we want to compute the co-kernel of the reduced Laplace of the dual. But notice that this is just the co-kernel of the matrix, which in the diagonal we are just uh, writing the length of the cycles bonding the eight phase. So for example, we can think what is the um, what is the length of the cycle in F1? Well, in this case, I have drawn it in such, such, such a way then every cycle uh, in the interfaces uh, are of length three. So here we have just a, a diagonal just trees full of, of the number three. And outside of the diagonal, we have the minus the adjacency matrix of the weak dual. So, okay, what is, what is this matrix? What is this uh, matrix at the end? So this, we call this the cycle intersection matrix. So given a plane graph with interior faces F1 to Fs, and let CI denote the length of this uh, of the cycles bounding these phases. Then the cycle intersection matrix denoted by C of G uh, is the matrix pre precisely the matrix that we that we mentioned uh, above, right? Like in the previous slide. So it's in, in the diagonal we only have the the lengths of the cycles and outside of the diagonal, we have the negative of the number of common edges uh, in the cycles bounding Fi and Fj for i and j different, right? So this is precisely this last thing, right? The diagonal of C minus the adjacency matrix of the weak dual. Therefore, the sample group of the outer plane graph is isomorphic to the co-kernel of the cycle intersection matrix. Okay, so how are we going to compute this co-kernel? This might, if you don't, if you are new to the subject of chip firing games and sample group, this might appear to be an easy problem, but it is not. So even to compute, like visualize the combinatorics of the identity element of some sample groups is difficult in general. So people try to come up with new ideas and new generalizations and so on uh, to, to attack this problem, to compute these co-kernels actually and the combinatorics behind them. So one of these ideas is generalizing the Laplacian, uh, 
like instead of putting on the diagonal, instead of writing the degrees of the graph, we write in the terminates. And we can think of the determinantal ideals from this new Laplacian. So, okay, so we only do that, right? We compute the chi per k minors of this generalized Laplacian. And we have something that is called the critical ideals of G. And these have some nice structure. For example, in sample groups, if you have the, a graph is a, is a induced subgraph of another graph, then you can not say some, anything about the sample groups. But in this case, you have the induced subgraphs maintain a relationship with, with respect to their critical ideals. And so this is the tool that, that is used to, to, to approach the problem of computing the sample group of, of other plane graphs. So how the critical ideals will be useful? Okay, so the greatest common divisor of the k minors of a matrix uh, define the invariant factors. So this is a way to compute the, the co kernel the sample group. And so if we know the generators of the critical ideals of G, then we easily know the invariant factors of of this graph. And this graph is precisely the uh, cycle intersection matrix of this matrix, sorry, <laughs> of the generalized uh, Laplacian matrix. So, okay, so we need to be thinking about the critical ideals of the weak dual of an outer plane graph. So the weak dual is a tree. So we only need to know about the critical ideals of a tree. And we know the combinatories of the generators of the critical ideals of trees, thanks to a paper from 2015 by Corrales and Valencia. And okay, so what is the combinatories behind them? So, okay, let T be uh, a tree. Let, let us think about T being the weak dual of our other plane graph. Then TL is uh, the tree plus by, and it's the tree and we have a loop and a debris vertex, right? And we think about the two matchings of the tree. How, how much time I have? Uh, we got started a little bit late, so you can take another minute. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, well, we can think about the two matchings of, of the tree. So remember the two matching uh, is a set of edges such that every vertex uh, of G is incident to at most two edges in the matching, in the two matching. And not that a loop counts as two incidents, okay? So given a two matching uh, of, of these three with loops, then we, we say that L of M is the set of loops of the, of the two machine. And a two machine is a minimal two machine if, there, if there's not any other two machine with the same cardinality and with, with less loops. And the set of minimal two machines will be denoted by two M star of DL. And the set of minimal two machines with K edges will be denoted by two M K star of TL. So, okay. And so my point is that we only care about the lengths of the cycles bonding the interior faces. And we care about the two matchings of the weak dual of our other plane graph or the two matchings of the weak dual with loops, right? And if D of the two matching is the determinant of the submatrix at the bottom formed by selecting the columns and rows associated with the loops. Then we have our main theorem, which says that 
if G is a bike connector, outer plane graph with F1 to Fn interior faces, and whose weak dual is three with n vertices, then we can define this delta case, which are the determinants defined by the loops of the two matchings of the minimal two matchings with k edges. And then the sample group has this structure. So we find the, the sample group of the, the algebraic structure of the sample group of another plane graph, uh, just checking out the, the combinatorics of its weak dual and, and, it, and the length of its bound of the cycles bounding the interior faces. And this tau of G is this, the number of spanning trees. And sorry, really, I'm going to have to cut you off here. Sorry? I am going to have to cut you off here so that we can move on to our next speaker. Oh, OK. OK, so quickly, just Let's... let me say that we can compute for this uh, graph. And if, if uh, you have an homeomorphic graph, then it is easy to compute the sample group. These are the sample group of these things. And this is a nice picture. So, OK. Sorry, I need to put this on. All right, uh, everybody, let's thank our speaker. Are there any questions? I think we're going to need to hold off questions uh, until after the session. Uh, Sophie, uh, if you are available to share your slides. Okay. Of course, yeah. Thank you very much.